management of the tasks required to be carried out sequentially. Hence, two techniques called priority rules and Johnson rules are adopted here. The general scheduling of sequence problem may be the job to be performed on at a time on each of M machines. So we have N jobs and we have M machines. The sequence of the order of the machine in which the job should be performed is given. The sequencing problem therefore is to find the best possible sequence. Basic terms that we are using in the sequencing are the number of machines. The number of machines it means that the service facility through which the job must pass before it get completed. Another definition is a processing order. It is a refers to the order in which the various machines are required for completing the job as per their processing time. Processing time may be processing time is the it means that the time required by each job on each machine. Idle time on each machine should be as possible as low as possible. This is the time in which the machine remains idle during the total elapsed time. Total elapsed time or max span. This is the time between the starting of the first job and completing of the last job. And the last one is no passing rule. This rule means that passing is not allowed. That is the same order of the job is to be maintained over each machine. Suppose we got the order of A, B, C, D, E, F. So same order has to be performed on the other machine also. We cannot reverse the order. If each machine of the N job to be processed through the two machine A and B in order A, B, then this rule means that each job will go to the machine A first and then to the machine B and then to the machine C if required. Some parameters are used to check the performance of any model, whatever the technique we are using. The first one is called as lateness. The between the actual completion time of the job and its due date. If the lateness is positive, then it is known as tardiness. In other words, the tardiness of the job can be defined as the amount of time after its due date that the job is completed. If the job is completed before due date, the tardiness is zero and it is called as earliness. The value of earliness will be negative, whereas value of the tardiness will be positive. Now, as far as whatever the program, whatever the model we are using, the tardiness should be as late as small as possible. That is, the job should be completed before the its due date. Flow time. The flow time is the total time of processing of the job. It includes the waiting time and the actual processing time. So, whatever the completion time is there, we add all completion time. That will be called as flow time. The total flow time is the sum of the flow times of all jobs and the average flow time is the total flow time divided by the number of jobs that you can see in the numericals how to calculate the parameters. Normally in the SPT rule we will find here that the average flow time will be very less and in the earliest due date that is another model used for sequencing where we find the lateness that is the tardiness will be very small. So if the tardiness is small we should go for EDD rule. And if the we want the average flow time should be small, we should go for SPT rule. We have some jobs and these jobs to be performed on machines. We have different operations and we have to find out the best possible way so that the mean time, flow time or the time required for complete operation should be as minimum as possible. There are some rules to decide the priority while sequencing. The rules are first come first serve that is for FCFS method. In this method, the job sequence is done as per we receive the items. Shortest processing time. In this box are arranged according to their processing time and then the sequence is followed. Is earliest due date. Arranged in the increasing order of their due dates and then the sequence is followed. This method guarantees the minimum tardiness. The fourth method last come first serve. In this method, we will perform the last last job that we received is served as the first and then in reverse order, we will finish up all operations. The fifth one is random schedule rule use in random order. Last method is, as far as date is concerned, we have to concentrate only on the time and earliest due date. We begin with the scheduling of n jobs on one machine and we, this is also called as n by one scheduling. So we, I will give the some question here. So we will discuss the SP2 rule and ED2 rule for this one. So we have a job number as PQRS. Their processing time in days are given 14, 10, 7 and 6. And due date is 20, 16, 15 and 17. Now I will go for first SPT calculation. So what we do is that we will arrange this job in the increasing order of processing time first. So in this one you have to first identify which job has a least time. So we have P for 14, this one is 10 and this one is 7. 10 and 7, 6 is the least job, so least time. So let 
select first S job. As soon as you complete this, cancel this. Now you are left with 14, 10 and 7. So next job is R. So cancel this. Now we are left with two job. One is 14 and one is 10. So we will perform Q first because it has less processing time. And finally we will perform P. So we have got a sequence. Sequence is S, R, Q, P. So this is one possible question. They will just ask you what is the sequence. Performance we will collect here the flow time and we will calculate the lateness that is earliness and tardiness. Whether the job is finished before the due date or job is finished after the due date. And we have a flow time that we are going to calculate. So first of all we have to select the job as per your sequence is S. So for job S we have processing time equal to 6 and due date is 7. T. Next job is R. So we have R job. Processing time for R is 7 and due date is 15. is Q job. For Q job 10 is the processing and 16 is due date. And finally we have to perform P job. So we have processing time is 14 and the due date is 20. So you have to arrange your job in the increasing order of processing time. And now let's process with the first job. So it is available at time 0 and we'll finish up by 6 days. Now on the 6th day we can take the 7 plus 7 days will be 13 days we can finish this. So on 13 day we can take the job queue. It take 10 days so it will finish up by 23 days. Then on 23rd day we will take the job P. 23 plus 14 37 so your job will finish up on 37 days. From this calculation we will find that 37 days are required to complete the job. So this one is called as max span, 4 job have been completed that is 37 days. The tardiness is calculated based on flow time out. So, so this one is out time minus due date. If your answer is negative you write in earliness column and if your answer is positive you write in tardiness. So positive answer you have to write in tardiness and negative answer you have to write on earliness. So we have 6 minus 17. Answer is minus 11. So your job is prepared, has to be prepared by 6 day. Whereas the delivery time is 17 day. It means that you have prepared your job 11 days before. That is why this is called as earliness. Now second time for job R, your job is prepared on 13 day. Whereas delivery is on 15. So 13 minus 15 will be equals to minus 2. So this job is prepared before the due date. Now 23 job Q is finished on 23 whereas required date is 16 only. It means that your job is delayed by 7 days. So this is 23 minus 16 that equals to plus 7. So plus 7 is tardiness. And for job P which was completed on 37 day whereas your to delivery date is only 20. It means that 37 minus 20 that equal to plus 17. So that will be your tardiness. So in this fashion we can calculate lateness. Lateness is of two type. One is earliness and one is tardiness. It was calculated from this out column minus tutored column. Now we can calculate the total flow time here. So total flow time is basically the sum of all these columns values. So total flow time. equals to 6 plus 13 plus 23 plus 37 that will be 79. So one of the important term required in the scheduling is average flow time. This is given by total flow time divided by number of jobs. Total flow time is the sum of all